All right, so it is episode 19 of the best Nova launcher setups. This is the second last of the year. We've been doing a new episode each and every month so far this year, still going strong. And yet again, I have three new setups to showcase to you all today, all of which are not only really functional, but also super visually appealing and unique as well. But before we get onto the episode, I wanna quickly mention today's sponsor, Surfshark. So Surfshark is a VPN application that allows you to securely connect to your favorite applications and websites, no matter where you are in the world. It works by encrypting your traffic and swapping out your IP address for one that matches your country of choice. And this means that if a website or application has location restrictions on where they can be used, Surfshark will make sure you can still gain access to them regardless of where you are. It's actually one of the few VPN applications that includes the whitelisting feature. And this means you can select apps that you wanna disregard from being routed through the VPN tunnel. So let's say you don't want the VPN to affect your banking or navigation apps, then Surfshark will automatically ignore them. And this makes life super convenient because you don't have to switch the VPN on and off manually like what most other VPN apps make you do. As well as that, it also includes what's called the clean web feature. And this blocks malware, trackers and ads, and also prevents you from any phishing attacks. On top of all of that, the app uses the Ike V2 security protocol, which guarantees high level security, unmatched speed, and also very minimal battery drain. You can try the app out for free with the seven day trial, which is great. But if you use the coupon code SPEC19, you can actually get a staggering 83% off the monthly price. And you can actually also use the one subscription account across multiple devices, which makes this a pretty phenomenal deal. It also works on all major operating platforms, including Android, iOS, Windows, Mac OS, plus a bunch more. So make sure you check out the link below to download Surfshark and try it out today. All right, on to the episode. So the first setup for today's episode has been sent in by Hassan, and you'll probably agree with me when I say that this really is a striking setup. It's certainly very visually unique in its overall look and design, which is why I wanted to include it. And so let's take a look at what he's got going on to make this setup work. So starting with that wallpaper, this is one that has been sent through directly, which is nice, link below, but this really is what gives this setup its distinct visual look. We've got that dark royal blue background and then smack bang in the middle sits that gold lion vector and everything else in the setup has been built around this aesthetic and it's been done so very nicely. Moving up the top in here, we have two custom KWGT widgets and a stock Nova Google search bar. Starting with the uppermost widget, this is a self-made status bar widget with some weather information on the left and a battery bar icon on the right. Now, as with all phones at this point with a notch, I've had to enable the status bar within Nova settings so we don't end up with a black bar there instead, but I've actually set the icons within Nova Launcher to be dark, and this means you can hardly see them here on this backdrop, which means that the custom status bar is really all that can be seen. A nice little workaround if you're gonna be using this setup on a phone that has a notch. Coming below that ever so slightly, and here we have two widgets overlapping one another. The first is a stock Nova Google search bar, which has been customized to match the color palette of this overall setup. And then within that, we have another custom made KWGT widget, and this one gives us the time and date. And because of the color and font used here, it integrates really well with the Google search bar, and it just makes it look like it's a single widget, which is really nice. All of these custom self-made widgets have been sent through directly, so make sure you check out the links below to get them onto your own device. Now coming below that line vector, and here we have six application icons, all of which are using icons from the golden icons pack. And I just think this icon pack fits so perfectly with that line image above it. It just makes the entire setup look very cohesive, which is great. Now, whilst we only have six icons here, which does seem pretty minimal, Hassan has solved the lack of functionality issue by adding a swipe up gesture on the Google Chrome icon. And this presents us with a folder full of Google applications, which adds back in a really nice layer of functionality, which is always very much appreciated. Aside from that, we have no dock, just an arrow indicator, which takes us into the app drawer. And this has been organized into a series of tabs, which is great. The icons here come from the PixUI icon pack, which looks pretty nice, although it is a bit of a departure from the rest of the home screen. But that's it for this setup. Very unique and appealing, so definitely worth trying out. Next, we have Thomas's single page setup, a very clean, very visually appealing home screen setup with lots of cool elements of functionality throughout. So let's dive in and see what we've got going on. Firstly, that wallpaper. 
This minimal material design-esque wallpaper comes from the AMOLED 4K wallpaper application, which will be linked below. And this gives us a clean backdrop to work with, which looks great. And also really helps to set the tone for the rest of the setup. Now that staggered line in the middle, which initially looks like it's a part of the wallpaper is in reality, a self-made battery bar widget that lines up perfectly with the dark angled portion of the backdrop. And I do think it fits really nicely within this setup, although its position will require some tinkering depending on the height of your device's display. But once you've got it locked in, it looks great. I've also set that up to launch into the battery settings once tapped upon, but this can sometimes interfere with the swipe into the app draw gesture. So you may decide to remove that option instead. Up the top right, we have a small clock that is a slightly modified widget taken from the Yoshia for KWGT widget pack. And this has been set up to launch into the clock application when triggered. And then just below that on the left, we have a date, time and weather widget. And this comes from the Trident 3 for KWGT pack. Down the bottom, we have a dock of five application icons, each of which are using icons from the Lines Free icon pack. And this does look pretty great in this setup. As well as that, each app icon has also been doubled up so that swiping up on them triggers an alternate application. And again, this is a nice added layer of functionality, which means we can keep our home screen looking pretty clean. Now below that, we have a swipe up arrow indicator icon. This is taken from the minimal UI for Zupa pack, although the arrows have each been modified to a dark red color, which looks great and ties into the overall theme very nicely. Swiping into the app drawer, and here we have a fairly simple layout, although we do have five folders up the top to keep the most important apps within quick access, which is nice. The colorway also matches the overall look of the setup, which is great. But aside from that, that's it for this setup. Very well implemented and definitely worth trying out. And finally today we have Kino's sleek and stylish one page setup, a really clean and cohesive setup that will look great on just about any device and that will please those of you who like to keep the home screen clean. So starting with that backdrop, this actually comes from a post from the Android Themes Reddit feed, which also has a bunch of other really clean wallpapers designed especially for Android setups. So I will link that feed below for you to check out. But what's great about this wallpaper is the large portion of negative space we have down the bottom. So this makes it perfect for placing all of our widgets, app icons and everything else on top of, and it means they're really easy to see and access, which is what you need in a good looking and easy to use setup. I also do like the small section of image we get up the top. I just think it helps in creating a visually appealing setup that isn't over the top minimal. In the middle, we have two separate KWGT widgets, both of which come from the fave KWGT widget pack, which is 115 and 148 to be precise. And up the top, we have a day, date and time widget. This looks really clean. And I've also set this up to launch into the calendar app upon tapping it. And then below that is just a nice mountain vector, which doesn't really serve any purpose except to look pretty and to add an extra visual element to the setup, which I think looks great. Below that, we have a two by four set of eight application icons. These are using icons from the Retro Rika icon pack, which I think looks awesome in this setup. And like the previous setup, each of these icons have also been set up to launch into a second alternate app when swiping up on them, which again, adds a really neat layer of functionality back into the home screen setup. Stepping down one more level, and here we have a music player widget, and this is taken from the K Music 2 for KWGT widget pack. Although I had to dive into the settings to customize this so that the song name was in all caps and to slightly alter the font and this matches how it looked in Kino's screenshot and also improves the overall aesthetic in my opinion. Swapping into the app drawer and again here we have a very stock looking layout no folders or anything of that nature to be found here but it does the job just fine and that's it for this setup clean minimal and definitely one worth trying out. But aside from that, that is it for today's episode. As always, each of the different assets you need to load these setups onto your own devices, including the Nova backup files, the wallpapers, the icon packs, the widgets, and all that good stuff will be linked down in the notes below. So don't forget to check them out and let me know which of the setups in today's episode was your favorite and why down in the comments below as well. If you wanna see your own home screen setup featured in this series, then the submission video is below as well. But aside from that, that is it for this episode. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.